For today's video, I'm going to show you the grave of someone who is arguably one of Cincinnati's most controversial figures. Some say she was divisive, others say she was generous, but regardless, she was a very complex woman. Hey everyone, it's Cashew. Today's adventure brings us to Cincinnati, Ohio in the community of Montgomery to Gate of Heaven Cemetery. And today, I'm going to tell you about a controversial woman named Marge Schott. Some loved her, some hated her. She was very complex. And I can't tell you everything about her, but I'm going to give you some highlights. So let's get started. Our adventure starts here. Marge Schott was the first woman to own and operate a major league team, the Cincinnati Reds, but she was forced out of baseball because she embarrassed fellow owners with her use of offensive racial and ethnic slurs. Marge was the daughter of a lumber baron, and she once said that he had always wanted a son, but wound up having five daughters. Marge was the second. She attended parochial schools and graduated from Sacred Heart Academy. Nicknaming her Butch, her father Edward introduced Marge to the world of business. In 1952, she married Charles Schott, the son of a prominent family and a wealthy businessman who eventually owned a car dealership, an iron works, and a brick-making company. They lived on a 70-acre estate in Cincinnati in a section called Indian Hill. Her husband died of a heart attack at age 42 in 1968. Marge neither remarried nor had children. She did, however, become well-known for having a St. Bernard named Schottsy, and Marge and her dog were often seen at Reds games and other events. After her husband's death, Marge took control of her husband's car dealership, but it was not an easy transition. One of her first problems was that General Motors did not believe she was qualified to run Schock Buick and moved to revoke the franchise. She fought for two years before the company signed a contract making her its first female dealer in a major market. Soon after Charles' death, she went to St. Louis to visit the brickwork she now owned and when she got there, the company's male executives gave her little information, but patted her hand and told her not to worry. She fired them all. She became a well-known character who once took a dancing bear as her escort to a formal ball. She acquired a second GM dealership, though she continued to fight with the company. In 1981, Schott paid $1.1 million for a minority stake in the Reds. The Reds fell to the bottom of their division in the next two seasons and were next to last in 1984 when Pete Rose returned as player manager. In December of that year, Schott became the franchise's managing general partner. She paid $24 million for her controlling stake. She also became the Reds' high-profile CEO. She installed her St. Bernard Schatzi as the team mascot and gave the huge dog free run of the field at Riverfront Stadium before games. This led to complaints from the players who had to watch where they stepped during the games. She became popular with Reds fans and entertained a steady stream of them, especially children who would visit her box seat during games. Marge tried to keep the price of tickets and the food relatively cheap so people could afford it. For example, hot dogs were a dollar. But Marge was not loved by everyone. When the Reds star Eric Davis was injured in the 1990 World Series, he said the club made him pay his own way home after he was released from an Oakland hospital. Davis said, if I were a dog, I would have gotten more care, and that's the truth. In 1991, a former Reds executive sued Schott, claiming he was fired because he objected to her refusal to hire black people. In testimony during the lawsuit, former front office personnel accused her of using racially offensive and anti-Semitic language and keeping a collection of swastikas. Marge admitted she sometimes used slurs jokingly. When Marge said, quote, Hitler was good in the beginning, but he went too far, end quote, she received a $25,000 fine and a one-year suspension from baseball. In 1996, umpire John McSherry dropped dead on the field during the Reds' opening game. Marge objected when the game, a sellout, was postponed. Later that year, she was suspended again after more flattering remarks about Hitler and insults directed towards Asian Americans and homosexuals. Not long after, 
General Motors accused her of falsifying sales figures, so she agreed to sell the dealership. In 1999, she was 70 years old and in poor health, and decided to sell her controlling interest in the Reds under pressure from the commissioner's office. She had paid $24 million and sold for $67 million. Marge died at the age of 75 on March 2, 2004. She had been suffering from emphysema, osteoporosis, and colitis, but the cause of death was not published. And buried to the left of Marge is her husband, Charles. As you can see, Marge Schott was a controversial figure and a complex one. On the one hand, she was unapologetic about her racial slurs, and on the other, she was generous to charities, especially if they involved animals or children. For example, she donated money to the Cincinnati Zoo, University of Cincinnati, and the Cincinnati Art Museum. And recently, UC removed her name from one of the buildings. I think it was the um, stadium because of her racial slurs. So, lover or hater, Marge Schott was very unapologetic about who she was as well. She came by it very honest. And some people liked her, like the fans and especially little kids. She was kind to them and others did not like her too well, like the Reds and some of her employees at the dealership. So she definitely was an interesting character here in Cincinnati. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Until next time, everyone, this is Cashew signing off.